good afternoon everyone and uh, as we all know um, this month of october is um, breast cancer awareness month and uh, tg group uh, is um, is uh, one of the largest group for cancer care so it's uh, very important that uh, in this breast cancer month talk about uh, awareness about breast cancer and one of the things awareness about breast cancer is obviously to heal the nutrition. So uh, it is possible that um, it will be good to hear from people who have experienced uh, cancer in different stages and uh, who have uh, continued to lead a normal life. I myself, uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar, I'm uh, chairman and CEO of HCG Group and um, I have, I have been managing cancer for the last 45 years. And, uh, you know, and I feel breast cancer is one thing where we learn a lot in even how to treat other cancer, even when I was practicing in U.S. for 28 years. So is what has been their experience? What is the learning curve for us? So going forward, we as doctors, we as healthcare providers, and also other people who experience cancer as we go forward can learn from it. So today we have um, uh, Kirti Tiwari, who is um, uh, a doctor, IAS officer, who is uh, been patient uh, several years ago. How long ago, Kirti? You are... It's been 13 years, Dr. Rajay. 13 one, years three. Ago, yeah, one, three years. I saw, <laughs> uh, I saw Kirti and she, she will tell her story. And, uh, and then Vandana, how about you? Um, and this was in 2007. So same time, also around the same years. time. <laughs> same time. And uh, Professor Indira, you are about uh, eight years. Seven. Seven, seven, years. Years. seven, seven years, 2013. No, seven years. So I, I, I think uh, I will just, uh, you know, essentially, I, I'm just facilitating. I'll let uh, each one of you speak and maybe if there is any questions or uh, Think I can kind of lead you. I will do that. But the most important thing is uh, we have to hear from you. So why don't we start with you, Kirti? You are uh, yeah. moment, uh, what has been so, Kirti? Please start. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Kirti Tiwari. I'm a doctor by uh, education and a civil servant by profession. And I got breast cancer in 2007, which is 13 years ago. And uh, I was very lucky to find Dr. Rajay and HPG. And uh, I got a, uh, thankfully, I got a lumpectomy done, which is basically breast conservation surgery and followed by chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And I'm absolutely fine now. I am living life the way it was meant to be lived or the way I was living it before. In fact, I would say cancer added a lot of things to my life in terms of, you know, appreciation. I've learned to appreciate a lot of things in life. And uh, I think that's enough for an introduction. Maybe then we will continue with our discussion. Yeah, Kirti, one of the things, uh, you know, we'll spend a couple of minutes is, uh, I remember when I saw you, uh, we were all fighting about this organ preservation. Yes, yes. That was an issue. And, uh, you know, we, I felt all the time that breast cancer, uh, we, we do not have to do a removal of the breast. Yes, yes. And, and I think uh, in um, for me in 2007 or eight uh, in India it was still evolving. Yes. Writing and, uh, and uh, you know you you had some experience on that. I think. Yes. Can you share? In fact, uh, all the other doctors I had gone to prior to meeting Dr. Rajay, they had told me that I needed to get a mastectomy, which is a breast removal. And being a doctor, I actually asked them that this was something I had studied 20 years ago. I'm sure there has been some improvement, some progress. So can we not do something else? But they were all insistent that they had to remove my breast. But then Dr. Ajay, like he said, he was uh, very forward in his thinking. And he, in fact, on his own, even without me asking, he said that the lump is small and we can do a lumpectomy protecting the breast. So I just had the lump removed. It was a surgery and I was, I think, home in uh, two, three days. And it helped preserve the breast. So, you know, in terms of uh, trauma to the body, it was much less. 
and even now it you know the associated complications uh, with a mastectomy are obviously not there and i feel very comfortable with uh, myself and my body yeah so uh, keerthi in this uh, all these 13 years also you have been able to work and you know you to call the treatments as advice so yes. if uh, today um, a, a patient you know we we feel you are absolutely right in fact uh, without sounding too radical uh, we feel that uh, doing mastectomy removing the breast actually is harmful uh, today's data also suggests that so okay. we are very clear no woman voluntarily wants to give up the yeah. uh, the breast but there are cases where some of the sometimes the doctors do sell look i did a mastectomy because the patient wanted what would be your advice to such people what would be your advice uh, you know I, sometimes I, I, patient feel getting breast out is the answer that cancer is out what would be your advice no i would feel that is a very very radical uh, step in fact uh, i think a lot of people went uh, you know if you get a breast conservation done followed by radiotherapy and the chemotherapy i think that takes care of all the cancer cells uh, mastectomy unless in certain cases where the doctor feel that is absolutely mandatory i don't think it should be done a lumpectomy is much more advisable so i would uh, as a patient who's gone through it not as a doctor advise uh, that if it, the lump is small if it is not too near the nipple then uh, if uh, the stage is uh, less you know it's a lower stage then i would suggest that everyone should go in for lumpectomies followed by radiation vandana you were uh, you know we heard from keerthi and uh, about the organ preservation what is your uh, view and how did you face this disease in 2007 when it was diagnosed yeah uh, what was the when... reaction of your family and uh, you know what we what what kind of message you got and uh, how did you handle this of course initially when uh, i was diagnosed it was uh, fear as i would say and even my family had the fear but then you know the moment uh, we entered hcg and i met the doctors there i think uh, i should say that in my fight against cancer i had an advantage and that's to exceed expertise uh, immediately when I spoke to the doctor he made me so comfortable and he told me look this is what it this is the problem so i think uh, let's remove the fear first and let's accept that you have a problem so this is what i thought yes okay i have a problem let me accept it and go ahead so this is he said you will have to undergo the surgery uh, chemo radiation and that's what i followed and i feel that uh, yes these things are uh, these three stages are very important because surgery as they suggest of course everybody has a has a different way the doctor knows best what to do but um, i think uh, i chose the right place i chose the right doctor and my treatment went off fine so i should say actually from um, yes as you said just no victim of uh, cancer but i should say from victim to victory so yeah see I, uh, uh, correct correct please sir. Uh, i'm back to my normal uh, i shouldn't say normal but it's a big jump for me i'm absolutely you know uh, like i said that now i can uh, talk to people and explain to them what is cancer and to remove the fear which is actually it's not the disease which kills you it's the fear that kills you so you have to just remove the fear have faith in your doctor yeah you know uh, both of you have come in a fairly early stage and uh, you know the cancer always uh, as 45 years in oncology uh, people always come and tell me what say the people read google people go through this and come back and say this is the stage what do you think and send me second opinion and all but you know i i you know i think both of you have given a clear picture if a cancer in the early stage treated properly uh, you can pretty much live for a long time without worrying about disease but you still need to get uh, frequent checkups and all but uh, 
as time goes on, your chance of recurrence become less and less. That's what you know. You are you belong to the 90% category of patients who will not recur in the HCG group. What we have shown. But now when we come to Indira, I said, you know, I reason I requested Professor Indira, who is a well-known sociologist, to join. Her case was a little bit different, and uh, she came in a different stage. So I like uh, Professor Indira to be operating her stage and all that. Have a little bit of discussion because we always talk about uh, stage four, stage three. Uh, Professor Indra, why don't you talk about your diagnosis here and what your yeah. Uh... My name is Indira and I am from Mysore. I was a professor. I'm a teacher by profession. I was a professor at the University of Mysore and a sociologist uh, by training and practice. I had a very, very active public life and I should say my trust with cancer began in 1970 when my father was, you know, was also a professor at the university. Uh, you know, was diagnosed with cancer, but you know that in the 1970s, you know, things were different, but we did our best. And of course, in uh, 1971, he passed away. When I, you know, and I will be very honest, I was living with that, you know, that world kind of bothered me so much. And uh, I was quite shocked when all of a sudden there were no symptoms or anything. I suddenly realized that, you know, I felt that there was a lump and I returned from a late night flight and then I went to a hospital in Mysore and uh, somehow they said, yes, it's there, uh, let's do a surgery. But it somehow for some reason, and I'm always thankful for that, did not happen. Then when I met Dr. Ajay Kumar, you know, the first, uh, I had met him once earlier uh, because uh, I had participated in a huge meeting of self-help groups which he had organized through his organization because his interests go, uh, you know, beyond just medical and to social work as well. So I was, of course, meeting him after a long gap. But the first thing he told me, he never made me. And, you know, when I learned, when I they had decided that there would be a surgery in my soul, Suddenly they said, uh, let's do an abdomen uh, test. And then they, when the doctors were doing, I heard the word lesion, you know, for the first time. I'll be frank, I hadn't heard of that word earlier. But I knew something was wrong, you know, that it was not positive. Then I realized that two or three lesions had gone into my liver. And it was really, really bothersome. And it, I was very fortunate that uh, Dr. Ajay, who was in the U.S., came had come to India and uh, I was able to meet him through uh, you know my husband's niece who knew him and uh, the first thing he told me was well I know you and he didn't call me a patient or make me feel like one because that word has a huge uh, problem with me he said you know I, I will remember and I want to quote this he said you like my sister and I promise that you will be back to your normal life and i told him you know because i am i was an avid traveler i've been traveling a lot in connection with my uh, profession so every other day i used to be in and out of mysore airport stations and i thought that my world had world had come collapsing but it was dr ajay who told me it will take a little bit of time but then don't you worry I'll promise you that you will come back to life. And to you, doctor, I'm extremely thankful because that's exactly what happened. And uh, he asked me to come to HCG and no surgery was done. He said, you know, it's gone into the liver and no, let's not do the surgery. So let's start chemotherapy. And the very next week I started chemotherapy and then it went on for six months. And I must tell you, people did ask me, you know, why do you come all the way from Mysore to Bangalore? And they started teasing me and saying HCG is our comfort zone. Yes, it is. And I'll, I'll go on record and say that I felt very comfortable when I came there. Initially, I hid from people, you know, because it bothered me, you know, those changes that chemotherapy brings. I just didn't want to see anybody. I sat here, there. 
um, I was shifting at home from this sofa to the other. I also want to say that I have a positive family that refused to accept my negativity. And they said, OK, you have gone all over the world on your own. So we will come with you only once. Now, when you are going somewhere, but after that, no. So I fought it. And every time I came to the hospital, I felt very nice because I was told, well, you know, you have you are fighting this. And uh, the very first uh, uh, meeting that I had after the PET CT was done, I started the chemo in uh, uh, November and the first PET CT after that was done in January. And then I, uh, when I came, met Dr. Ajay with the result, it showed that it was almost gone. And what he said that day when he met me, he said, you know, for a, you see, for a doctor who sees thousands and thousands of people who come with concerns, then he said, you made my day today and you are like a real star. And I think those words went into my mind and I decided I'm going to fight this. And finally, within about six, seven months, I started doing everything that I was doing earlier. And uh, also, you know, that was 2014. I formally retired from the university service. But then my life didn't stop for me. I became president of the Indian Sociological Society, which is the world's second largest body of professional sociologists. I have traveled extensively, gone to the remotest corners of the country, traveled abroad, and I've been able to manage everything. And I want to thank Dr. Jai and my, the team of doctors and HCG for this. And it was only because I did. You know, people used to ask me, aren't you feeling tired? You know, I said, no, why do you ask me that question? I'm not feeling tired, don't want to be tired. And I must also say that, you know, there are a couple of people who were around me who said, we have changed your life after we saw you because we had given up. And I especially like to talk of one or two cases later. So this is how I am now here, back doing things what should I say, 20, 30, 40 times more than what I was doing in my pre-cancer days. And of course, the treatment was scary initially. I used to cry and come with a lot of fear. But over a period, I didn't want to meet anybody. When I come to HCG also, I would always look around. Is there somebody there who would see me? But there, and you know, all my chemotherapy, I did... Uh, uh, in a private world because I just wanted to hide. But over a period of time, I learned that it's always good to be with people only when you see. Always the question, I think all those of us who go through cancer, we are bothered by the question, why me? And it was HCG that taught me not to ask that question because for me, my pain may be the greatest. But when I went there and saw others fighting it, 